seated. Thank you. Colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. The closing ceremony is about to begin. Please be seated and turn off your mobile phones. At the end of the ceremony, please remain seated until our student representatives release you all row by row from your seats. You will all follow the rector and the directors of studies to the reception, which will be held at our Vervesdijk premises here next door. Thank you. Well, dear students, dear colleagues, dear family members and guests, I wish uh, to welcome you to this closing ceremony of the 2016-2017 academic year, the year of the John Maynard Keynes promotion. You, students assembled here for the last time, unfortunately, in one large group, you students of the Jean Maynard Keynes Promotion are a privileged group of students, privileged in several respects. Firstly, you are part of a unique community. This community, it's largely you yourselves who have created it during this academic year. We members of the academic staff, of the personnel of the College of Europe, we can only try to create a framework for you during this year to grow together and to become a real community. Most of this work of 
really developing into a community, you have done it yourself during this year. By working and living together, by opening up your minds to the different mentalities, national backgrounds, cultural traditions of your fellow students, by actually engaging in joint projects, and yes, by going together through the stressful aspects of the year at the college as well. I think uh, to today, at the end of the year, after several weeks of tough examinations, yes, there is also a community element in having lived through <laughs> uh, all the different demands of the year, but especially it's the interaction amongst yourselves which has uh, created this community. I think uh, what you form now, as you are here, and as you are on the point of unfortunately already leaving the college, you have created a real transnational community. The Esprit du Collège, you have generated it anew. I speak also in the presence of the president of the Alumni Association. I think uh, she could confirm that yes, each promotion has its own community spirit as part of the wider community. So, and this you will take with you when you leave today. It will stay for you for all your life. Just uh, last weekend, there was a reunion of several former promotions of the college, and there were many who had brought their family members. There were over 500 in the Out Xinjian Hospital. And many felt it was coming, like coming back and to experience the community spirit again anew. So quite a number of them had already um, made the career. One proud father in a senior international position in an international organization presented me with no less than three sons who all are students or are now in the career already. But he said it was for him very important to actually show to uh, um, his uh, sons also the community spirit which actually the uh, college stands for. So here you have a privilege for life and you have created it to a considerable part yourselves. Secondly, and you would probably expect me to say this, um, Yes, I think you have also benefited and are privileged by having experienced quite a unique study offer at the college. Combining um, some of the best expertise available in the respective fields, um, benefiting from a program which is constantly updated and we hope is constantly improved. You have benefited from a fair number of um, special events organized, special lectures, conferences you could attend. Um, so yes, I think one can say with some confidence that the study program is also one of the elements of privilege. But let me also say that the knowledge which we have tried to transfer to you during this year this knowledge will necessarily become rather rapidly, in some cases, outdated. Because the European construction and the relationship between the European Union and its major partners in the world, of course, keeps constantly evolving. So the knowledge about which we tortured you just in the exams may partially in one, two, three, four years already be outdated. But what will not get outdated is a specific mindset which we also try to transmit. And this is to look at the challenges of Europe and at the challenges of relations between Europe and the world in a constructive way, in a multi-dimensional way, to combine different elements of analysis, to look at the wider picture and to try to find solutions rather than to proceed with the stock taking and looking only at the facts.
Students at the college, these are here quite often from employers, are particularly valuable because the understanding which they bring with them of the complexity of challenges and because of the solution orientation which they apply to, to, uh, to their jobs. So it is a willingness to engage, to transcend the existing facts and to look at the best possible ways of combining different elements of solutions. Just uh, three weeks ago, I had the newly appointed head of the mission of the Turkish Republic to the European Union in my office. Not an easy job <laughs> in, in, at this particular moment in time because, of course, there are some elements of strain in the relationship between Turkey and the European Union. And I asked him, well, tell me frankly, do you still remember elements of your teaching of more than 20 years ago? And he said, yes, it still happens to him in negotiations when he thinks there's a particular problem. He said, the college has made me learn that you need to look at the wider picture, that you need to look at the multidimensional nature of each problem, and that yes, that you should not stop with the problems, but to seek solutions. So here, I think you are privileged still in another way, that the study experience comes with a specific mindset. And we all at the college wish you good success in your careers to make optimal use of this college mindset. I think uh, the third element of privilege is, and here in the moment of this closing ceremony, you have uh, some uh, final element ultimately added to this experience, and this is that you have spent a year in one of the most beautiful cities of Europe, a city full of cultural heritage, full of European links, because Bruges was a major European trading and even political center in the Middle Ages. It's a city which, I think you will agree with me, has its own beauty in each of the seasons. It has its own specificities, such as uh, bicycle riders coming at high speed from all directions, and uh, also, of course, uh, a few mosquitoes uh, during the summer, etc. But I will not uh, dwell on uh, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on these aspects, but just say it's a privilege to have spent a year in this city. And the privilege is all the greater, as just this week, you students of the college, by an extraordinary generosity of the city, were made honorary citizens of Bruges. As I indicated on this occasion, I myself greatly envy you because I'm involved with the college since 1991. I've never been made a honorary citizen of the city of Bruges. So there you are very privileged and none of the professors of the college have. Huh? Mm? Enjoy. Fourth and final element of the, of, the, of the privilege, and I would like to recall this, the college could not operate without the support of European and national government institutions without the support from the European Union budget, the support provided by the Belgian federal government, in the case of um, our other campus, from the Polish government, the member states, the scholarships provided. And ultimately, this means that you, students of the college, are thought uh, important enough of sufficient value to society to actually make quite a significant taxpayer's investment. The real cost of a student at the college is nearly double of the um, uh, fees which the college is requesting. So even those of you students who are actually paid for your studies themselves got a the substantial support from European taxpayers. So they think that you are worth the investment so therefore, be aware of the privilege and in your careers, well, when the occasion comes, think back, yes, we were supported 
by European citizens also in this way to enable us to, um, to fulfill our careers, uh, career ideas and also to make a positive contribution to uh, society. Well, I said you are privileged in these different respects, but I would like to add you have some reason also to say to yourself, yes, we merit to be privileged. Without actually, of course, saying that now you should say, oh, we merit all this, and uh, well, why is he stressing this so much? Um, I think that the year at the college is really a very intensive one. It's not only intensive in terms of the pressures of a demanding program, I think uh, you would agree with me that you have written a fair number of papers. <laughs> Often under very tight deadlines, you had to write the master thesis, you had to uh, go through a grueling uh, series of exams at the end. But there are other um, challenges which you have to go through. One is to live together in a multinational community and in a very intensive way in the residences. And sometimes, uh, initially, you may have um, uh, thought, oh, uh, our fellow students from this or that national background, they seem to never sleep at, light, at night because they have a tradition to do lots of parties during the night. Why can they not finally go to bed? Just one uh, example uh, was saying where one needs to get adjusted to different mentalities, temperaments, etc. And this multinational community experience has a lot of positive sides, but it sometimes can also be, initially at least, a challenge. You mastered the challenge very well, I think. Then you had to adjust to very different teaching styles. We at the college, on purpose, we do not force our professors to harmonize the teaching styles. So some professors may prefer more ex cathedra teaching, whereas other professors, from the first seminar session onwards might wish to interact with you. And this is partially due to different university contexts, to different traditions at national universities. And also, of course, a practitioner, a professor who comes from a practitioner background, will teach in a different way than a university professor. So you have to, you have to adapt from one course to another to different ways of transmitting knowledge and skills and engaging with you, and you manage to do this. And this is not the case in many academic institutions, to say the least. And all this you also had to do in two different official languages of the college. Chapeau, you have managed. Um, but you have also found the time and the energy for a lot of other activities during the year. You have engaged in a host of different tasks and very often with full energy and an amazing commitment. It would be impossible to read out all those activities. Yesterday I looked at your yearbook and I even found out from the yearbook still more activities you have been engaged in than I was previously aware. So I think I would need to take 20 minutes to read only out the whole list. Let me just uh, mention a few. Your Concours Casson team has won this year's um, 32nd edition of the prestigious Cour Casson Moot Court competition with uh, just amazing number of individual prizes won. I read out all these prizes to the Administrative Council of the College earlier this week, and it took quite a while. And they were duly impressed. A team of your College of Europe Energy Group has won on the basis of very original and substantial research also carried out, the European Charlemagne Youth Prize for its white paper on best environmental and uh, energy practices in the European Union. Your delegation to the Model United Nations in London returned also with an impressive list of awards and you have created a number of new groups. The College of Europe Young Diplomats team 
with uh, their activities, the environmental team. And you have also continued certain activities, and very successfully so, uh, which you have taken over from your predecessors. La Voix du Collège, the college newspaper, established last year, we did not know on the college staff side whether actually it would be continued. Because sometimes you have initiatives which are started by one promotion, and then there is not enough willingness to continue it. But um, your Voix du Collège, of which I have a copy here with me, has been very successfully uh, continued with um, a lot of uh, punchy and stimulating contributions. Congratulations. Um, you have also found um, time for charity work during the year, and I would like to add uh, that the college is particularly proud each year for charity work for which you find time such as the selling by your asylum and uh, migration team of candles made by refugees during the Christmas period. On top of that, you have also implemented a lot of other activities, such as a conference on counter-terrorism, which you organized at your own initiative. The trips arranged by the business club of the students and the participation in the P2P challenging extremism initiative sponsored by the U.S. State Department. So um, to find time for all this in parallel to a very demanding study program shows how much you can do. And with this energy, I think you should really be in a position to make a big difference in your professional later lives as well. But last, uh, last but not least, I would also like to say that Yes, you made still another contribution to the life, and um, which merits your privileges. I'm not hesitant to say it. Through all your numerous parties, yes. <laughs> you have organized national weeks, regional weeks, bilateral, trilateral um, um, weeks, sometimes much more than a day it normally should be. And uh, you have organized an un incredible number of which I only get occasionally a glimpse of residence parties, of birthday parties, etc. You have engaged in so many activities of this sort that sometimes uh, at the management level, at the academic level, we got concerned are they not doing too much on this side. But ultimately it is this which also makes a fundamental difference as regards this community spirit. And therefore, I think you can witness to this, this college has never tried to actually stop you actively from doing even more on this side. So all this means that you have made a tremendous investment in your studies, but all in the other activities and in living together. And therefore, I think you merit to be privileged. But on this occasion, I would also like to spare a thought for those many now present here who have helped you to get where you now are as students and soon to be alumni of the college. Your parents and other family members who have helped you all the way up to the college. We wish on the college side to give full credit to them because they surely must have created a very stimulating environment for you to become interested in the first place in European affairs, in wishing to reach out across borders in order to make efforts in your studies to qualify for the college. And I think on this occasion we should all think that where we are at a given moment in time, in your, our personal lives and in our professional lives, we owe it very much to a supportive environment we have benefited from when we were younger. So to the parents and family members present, thanks on behalf of the college.
I wish to thank here, and I'm sure you will also join me on that, uh, I wish to thank also all those of my colleagues at the college who really over the year have tried to do their best to make this year for you a fruitful, enjoyable and special one. Of course, first of all, I would like to extend my thanks to the members of the academic uh, core, the directors of studies, full-time professors and uh, certainly uh, last but not least our visiting professors. Uh, sometimes <laughs> uh, if you hear visiting professors in the college relies a lot on visiting professors, it sounds very nice. It almost like the, it sounds like a tourist occupation, a visiting professor, as if you are, so to say, on holiday and visiting a beach. But I have been a visiting professor at the college for over 20 years. I can tell you it's not such a holiday appointment as it may appear to the outside world. Because, of course, you have to prepare the courses, you have to do a lot of traveling, sometimes through all sorts of strikes, which actually are tempting to delay you and prohibit your arrival. Um, you have occasionally some frustrations, yes, I have to say this, also with students arriving late <laughs> or sending strange emails when one doesn't really know how to reply in the first place. So yes, also our visiting professors make a major, major effort. I have made a major effort to contribute to, um, to, uh, to your success in the end. I would like to extend my thanks also to all the different uh, services of the college. Of course, you have had particularly close collections with the Students Affairs uh, Office, and, um, but um, also the estates, the facilities service, the IT service, um, communication service. Um, uh, we have uh, not to, to be forgotten. Also, uh, this is very much in the background of everything. Uh, the uh, head of the finance office <laughs> and the financial service. Um, so um, the library uh, staff, which I'm sure you have experienced also is very uh, helpful. Um, and also uh, special mentioning of your residence ladies. Um, and I know that the residence ladies The residence ladies, I had uh, my own little experience, although I'm not an ancien of the college, but I lived for some time uh, um, when I was on a part-time basis at the college in one of the residences. And sometimes they are much more than residence ladies, they are actually some sort of a mother of the residences. So if students in the morning uh, well, uh, are a bit depressed because of not so good exam results, or if they have occasionally a hangover from a party which was too intense, uh, they uh, actually, so to say, do a lot to actually put things right. So from this perspective, this is very much also part of the, of the college, uh, college experience. So uh, therefore, all my thanks to the colleagues who have made uh, this year possible. Bon, euh, quand euh, on vient au remerciement, cela indique normalement que la fin euh, d'un discours euh, s'approche, finalement. Assez souvent, euh, on dit ah, bon, finalement, il, il commence à remercier tout le monde. Euh, mais permettez-moi de vous demander encore votre patience et attention pour trois points. Le premier, c'est que par tradition, la cérémonie euh, de clôture au collège est utilisée pour l'annonce du prochain patron de promotion. Bon, euh, je vais procéder avec euh, euh, cette tradition maintenant. C'est avec grand plaisir que j'annonce tout d'abord que le prochain patron ne sera pas un patron, mais une patronne de promotion. Ouais. Euh, la prochaine patronne de promotion est une écrivaine née à Bruxelles, euh, naturalisée américaine et la première femme qui a été élue à l'Académie française. À travers ses œuvres, ses œuvres des romanciers, 
ses œuvres de mémoire, ses œuvres de critique littéraire et culturelle. Elle a procédé avec un questionnement profond de l'essence de l'homme de tous les temps, à travers ses rêves, ses angoisses, ses victoires et ses défaites. En faisant cela, elle a fait une contribution primordiale à la littérature européenne, mais je dirais aussi à la philosophie, à la pensée philosophique sur les racines euh, de l'Europe, également du point de vue culturel. Ses œuvres constituent un appel permanent, et je trouve un appel émouvant, de se souvenir de nos racines, des responsabilités de notre liberté et de notre devoir de lutter contre l'indifférence face aux risques permanents de barbarie humaine. La prochaine patronne de promotion du Collège pour l'année académique 2017-2018 sera Marguerite Jursnar. The second point, among the final ones, is a, reg a word regarding this year's patron, John Maynard Keynes. He was chosen as patron de promotion before the famous, infamous Brexit vote of last year. He was chosen also because, to give an indication of the huge contribution the United Kingdom has made to European thinking, to European thinking across borders. And as we are now in the painful process of the United Kingdom, most likely, definitely, some say, leaving the, uh, the European Union, uh, I think it is very important, and Keynes will always stand for that, to remember this huge British contribution and that the United Kingdom will always, in a sense, remain part of the wider European construction. I said at the beginning of the year that Keynes was surely worthy to be your patron, but that you still had to prove worthy of him. Your patron, Keynes, showed throughout his life a unique capacity and determination to think across the borders of the existing, to pursue causes of common good, and to persevere against odds. By reaching out beyond the borders of your countries and the knowledge you came with, by trying to identify through your work, papers, master theses, simulation exercises, and participation in the activities I mentioned, by trying to identify through all these cooperative cross-border solutions to Europe's challenges, and not the least, last but not least, by showing great perseverance in pursuing your studies and competitions, you have shown, I think, although still on a slightly more modest scale than Keynes, that some of Keynes' qualities are also growing amongst yourselves. Yes, you can bear the name of your patron de promotion, John Maynard Keynes, with right and with pride. Now let me come to my last point, and it's a point um, under which I would like to give you a motto on your way, and it's a motto which is borrowed from one of the famous citizens of Bruges, of Brugge. Louis Lodewijk van Groothuis, a Bruges patrician and one of the first truly European diplomats of the Middle Ages, had as his motto, plus est en vous, there is more in you. Incidentally, he actually died in 1497, the year when the European discovery of the Americas took place 200 meters from the diver 
uh, building, the main building of the college. I think you can take this with you from, from your year at the college, that now there is more in you than when you came. There is more, not only in terms of knowledge and skills, which surely will help you with your future careers and responsibilities, but also because all of what you have given to yourselves during this year and because of the community you have created. There will be surely challenges ahead of you. You are young, so it will not be a pathway of roses, most likely for any one of you. So there will be challenges, difficult professional choices, difficult personal choices, and sometimes you may also find that the going is tough, and you might also find lonely and thinking that you have really to take difficult decisions on your own. I wish that in these moments you can actually think plus et en moi à cause de l'année passée au collège. I hope that this year at the college, the community experience, the other uh, all, everything else which you have experienced will be a source of strength and determination that you will feel more positive about yourselves and more willing to tackle the challenges in a positive spirit. Plus et en vous. Thank you. I'm sorry, I should immediately have made the transition. I was thinking that we have a musical interlude immediately. I apologize for the slight procedural error. Uh, I would like to, um, to introduce uh, Eleonora Vectara. I had already uh, uh, referred to her as the president of the Alumni Association for her uh, speech at the end of this uh, year. I would immediately like to say that I announce her to some extent with some regret now because it's the last time she will address us in this capacity as um, uh, she will hand over uh, her function as president to our successor at the end of the month. I use this occasion to say that we have very much appreciated a very constructive role over all these years and everything she has done for the Alumni Association of the College which clearly finds itself in a much better position than you took over. Eleonora, please, the floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Recteur, chers professeurs, Mesdames et Messieurs, chers étudiants. C'est avec grande émotion que je suis aujourd'hui avec vous. Comme le recteur disait, je termine mon mandat de présidente, c'est mon deuxième mandat. Il est temps de passer la main et je suis heureuse de tout ce que nous avons accompli avec l'équipe, les membres du conseil d'administration, toutes les activités que nous avons organisées, tous les projets que nous avons lancés, les finances assainies aussi de l'association. Senza lilleri non si lallera. Good Italians, no money, no fun. But, uh, mais je suis uh, absolument heureuse et, et apaisée de laisser la place à mon successeur, qui est aussi une ancienne, Michaela Simakova, ancienne assistante aussi. L'association est ainsi entre deux bonnes mains. Donc je vous laisse avec sérénité. Et je vous revois, je vous vois ici avec émotion, parce qu'il y a 15 ans, j'étais moi aussi assise à votre place. 15 ans, ça vous semble longtemps, lorsqu'on a 25 ans, ça fait ouf, plus de la moitié de l'existence. Mais je vous assure, c'est une petite minute, pas plus. Ça passe très vite. Assez parlé de moi. À vous. À la fin de cette cérémonie, vous serez des anciens. L'année est terminée. Mais en réalité, comme le recteur l'a déjà esquissé, 
l'aventure ne fait véritablement que commencer. Vous rejoignez un groupe de gens, a community, a very special community. You are now joining a very special group of people. As the rector mentioned, the shared experience, the shared memories of having lived through a very intense year of the college is something that will bind you forever and will connect you as well with other alumni you may find along the way. But I also think that the alumni community is very special because of what brought you here. The motivation to study at the College of Europe. I've met many alumni of different generations across the years. The older generations, and remember the college first opened in 1949, the very first generations came here to dream, to plan a new Europe on the ashes of wars and despite the Cold War that had just started. So idealism. This idealism also continued with the European project being started, the European Economic Community. People wanted to come here to think how to improve the European construction, how to contribute to it. My generation, 15 years ago, just before, let's say, the big Eastern European enlargement, was there to reunite Europe after the fall of communism. And you, you are here. Perhaps you think, oh, I go to the College of Europe, I'll get a good job. So perhaps a more utilitarian approach. But I don't buy into that. You could have gone somewhere else if you were just looking for a good diploma. Instead, you came here to study European affairs, a topic that is frankly not sexy, it's not trendy. There are many critics of the European construction all over Europe and beyond, and yet you are here. So I do believe that you share some of the old alumni's idealism, and that makes you special. So, the community. In such a community, there is a family spirit. The rector has mentioned the important scholarships that you have received from governments, and indeed, they have invested in you. But I would also like to say that some scholarships have been funded by fellow alumni, people who think that, yes, the deserving young Europeans and neighboring Europeans deserve to study at the college, and that's why they have funded in the recent years a number of scholarships, sometimes taking over from governments who decided that there was less money available because of the crisis or whatever bad reason. And the second point in this family is that all along the way you will be helped. Non pas qu'il y a du népotisme entre anciens du collège, mais il y a cette sympathie naturelle qui fera que lorsque vous poserez votre candidature quelque part et qu'un ancien lira votre CV, vous serez accueilli avec bienveillance. Bien sûr, vous devrez faire vos preuves, mais ce capital sympathie initial sera un atout non négligeable. Et donc, pour ceux d'entre vous dont c'est les parents qui ont financé l'année au collège, je voudrais dire, chers parents, vous avez fait, si je puis dire, un bon investissement pour l'avenir de vos enfants. Vous faites partie d'un groupe très spécial. Vos enfants. So who will you become? Well, that will depend on you. It is customary for such end-of-year speeches to tell you that you should follow your own heart. Yes, it's all nice and dandy, but isn't it cringingly obvious? So I'd rather spell it out on three points. First of all, find meaning in what you do. Next, be ambitious. And third, show fortitude. As the rector mentioned, we didn't coordinate, by the way. As the rector mentioned, life isn't easy for anybody. First point, find meaning in what you do. Follow your beliefs. I've mentioned 
that you have come here out of interest for the European construction. How will you translate this into action? There are many different ways. Many of our alumni are politicians, diplomats, civil servants, lawyers, judges, journalists. There are many ways. On the 1st of May 2004, I was very privileged to attend a dinner with low-ranking Commission officials. However, although they were low-ranking and it was really a low-key dinner, I will never forget it, because one of them stood up and said, our names will not be in the history books, but today we brought Europe back together. Have a fulfilling career by finding meaning in what you do. This brings me to the second point. Finding meaning, yes, but be ambitious. In all professions I've mentioned, our alumni have reached the highest positions. And again, as the rector mentioned, you can also do that too. You are well educated, well equipped, have the character to reach such positions. Among our alumni, we have the most senior diplomats and civil servants. I don't know if you know, but in nearly all cabinets of commissioners at the European Commission, there is at least one alumnus or alumna. There we have several MEPs who are alumni of the college, ministers from Iceland down to Macedonia, via the UK, Finland, Croatia, you name it. I'm not saying this just to impress you, but also to remind you that one day, long ago, these people were also students. And yes, some were very, very bright, but some, you know, got distracted by the very intense year at the college. I cannot name that person, but a future minister was once sent back home to rewrite the thesis by a very tough young professor called Jörg Mona. <laughs> the thesis was not good enough to get the diploma, so the person, the future minister, went back home and dutifully improved the thesis. The diploma was eventually awarded. And as you can see, if you are having now a little accident, don't despair, persevere, get your diploma, and move on. So, I'm also dwelling a bit on the politicians, because perhaps as I'm influenced by the fact that I've, I'm now living in the UK and uh, the situation of the ruling, with the ruling politicians, well, I'd made no mystery, I find quite appalling. I would like to call on you to be our next generation of politicians. Politics is a tough environment and perhaps your parents are not so keen on you moving into politics and as a mother, I would tend to agree, but as a citizen, I have to call on you to make a contribution to the politics of Europe. You really have the capability to do so. Of course, life is harsh, politics are harsh, elections are won, elections are lost. But whatever path you choose to follow, that is something that will happen, no matter what you do. There will be difficulties. This brings me to the third point. Nobody leads a perfect life. Professionally, you will not always be successful. As well equipped and well qualified you are, you are going to fail. It is very tough sometimes, and I meet sometimes young alumni who have always been the brightest of their promotion of the year, of their anything, and then they fail something and it's the end of the world. No, it's not. It's just normal. We are people. Profession privately, nobody is immune, unfortunately, to bereavement, difficulties in relationship, serious illness, but again, with fortitude, or as the Americans like to say, with grit, I'm sure you can do it. And if I may add a little personal note, perhaps what helps fortitude 
is a bit of deluded optimism. I've been brainwashed from a young age by my father, who's Swedish, and who's always kept repeating, Altning orna say, which means everything will be all right in the end. It's of course not true if you're an adult and you can think about this, but Altning orna say, social fortitude, ambitions, and follow your beliefs, and everything will be all right. Good luck. Thanks very much uh, to Eleonora for uh, excellent speech. Uh, if I may just excuse a very prominent student <laughs> whose thesis I failed. Um, she actually had just met at the college a uh, future husband and was quite distracted by this fact. And I think this is a very legitimate excuse for failing the thesis in the first session. Of course, I was not aware of that at the time. Sorry. <laughs> we now have the musical interlude by our student choir. Yes, no, no, no. 
think we are just waiting for a solemn intervention of the trumpeters. Well, um, after the outstanding presentation by our student choir, but it will not be the last one, there will be one other, uh, the trumpeters have actually announced the start of uh, the award ceremony of this after afternoon, and I would like to start with the academic awards to the laureates of each department. Now, just this morning, the academic council of the college met to um, uh, for the deliberation and the resultat. So uh, the laureates have formally been consecrated just this morning. So uh, it's absolute uh, news also from this uh, perspective. And I would like to start with the laureate of the Department of European Political and uh, Administrative Studies, Annegret Kempf. Then we move to the European Economic Studies program. It's uh, Louise Dumont. Congratulations. Thanks, Peter. And then uh, we move to uh, the uh, laureate of the European Legal Studies program, uh, François Terranova. He doesn't want to be photographed with us. <laughs> and um, uh, finally, the laureate of the International Relations and Diplomacy Studies program, Etienne Rosner. Alles gut. Danke dir. Ja. In the middle, in the middle. Ja. 
We then move to a series of awards made available by sponsors who all come from uh, different, which all come from different professional backgrounds, but all share the commitment to the college's mission and want to give due recognition to special achievements in different fields. The first award in this series is the Sergio Lopez Perona Memorial Prize for the best thesis on the EU's relations with the Middle East, presented by Mr. Matthias Falkenberg. Hello everyone, congratulations for finishing this year. I know it's been very intense. Um, Sergio Lopez was, uh, to quote um, um, Rector Mona, was someone that contributed to our community spirit uh, of the promotion of Marcus Aurelius like maybe no one else. And uh, unfortunately he passed away too quickly. So, um, uh, us, uh, we had the idea of uh, keeping his memory alive by um, donating a price the Sergio Lopez uh, Perona Prize, and um, I will make it very short. This year we go to someone who managed to uh, slip a famous movie title into his thesis title. So depending on you how you read it, it's called Lost in Translations. I don't, think, I don't think there's a need to introduce him, but this is uh, Brice Didier with his uh, full title Lost in Transatlantic Relations, Euro Atlantic Relations, and Russian Reassertion in Light of the Syrian Conflict, Great Power Struggles in a Contested, contested Middle East. Congratulations. <laughs> I would then uh, continue with the UNO Quiz Prize for the best uh, thesis on the European Union and other world regions, presented by um, Mr. Anthony Anton, director of UNO Quiz, our partner our institution here in Bruges. Professor Anton. Ladies and gentlemen, dear students, director. United Nations University is, as some of you may know, a global think tank that works for the UN and that has 15 centers all over the world, from Guadalupe to Tokyo to New York, and it has one center here in Bruges. And I thank the college and the rector for already 15 years of close collaboration, a collaboration that we will continue over the next years, even though we now have two new partners, the University of Ghent and the Vrije Universiteit Brussel, the University of Brussels. As an alumnus from the VUB, I must say it's a premiere that I can address a whole church. <laughs> Chris researches specifically regional integration and globalization, and that is to say that we are looking into how we can see the limits to globalization. We specifically look at the defense of global public goods, and one of those are human rights and human dignity. It is therefore that we were very impressed by a thesis that was, um, that was on statelessness, and statelessness uh, one of those subjects that is often forgotten. We therefore are very um, joyful to give the award for best thesis on EU and world regions to Ms. Oleksandra Zmienko, who unfortunately cannot be here because she is studying at the Natalin campus, but I hope she, she sees this. <laughs> on television.
and we are looking forward to seeing her for a six-month paid internship at our premises. Thanks so much. For So the next uh, prize uh, is a Eurojust award for the best thesis on judicial cooperation in uh, criminal matters in the European Union. Um, I think that, uh, ah yes, you have, I was, uh, because originally you were supposed to sit there, but <laughs> the president of Eurojust uh, has found the time to come over from the Hague, especially for this occasion, and thanks very much um, to President Konings for joining us, for presenting the Price. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, dear students uh, from Bruges and from Natalin, it's always good to take the rector by surprise. I'm here to give the best prize, uh, the award for the best uh, thesis uh, in judicial cooperation for criminal matters in the European Union to a person who devoted extra time to something which is at the heart of Eurojust, the fight against terrorism. And in this fight against terrorism, we need as much as information as possible. No need to say that we are confronted with uh, a huge security concern and a threat in the European Union. So very recently, I talked about an unprecedented security threat. But since very recently, I talk about a new normal. A new normal we all have uh, to uh, live with, but never have to accept. We have to fight it with all means possible. One of those means uh, is the PNR, uh, the passenger's name record, uh, which is very useful and very relevant uh, in the fight against uh, terrorism. A whole debate took place in the European Parliament in 2011 for reasons of data protection and fundamental rights, the European Parliament voted against. But in 2016, after having been confronted with a myriad of terrorist attacks, the European Parliament, on the internal dynamics but also external factors, decided differently. The thesis that is devoting extra time in a very well written way uh, to this theme is the one of Madame Céline Dubac. And the, and the top prize is a training at Eurojust in the office of the president. Even framed. Well, we will then uh, continue with the next award, which is a Microsoft Award for the best uh, thesis on information and communication technologies, presented by Mr. Mark Lange. Good afternoon. Thank you. I'm very proud to represent Microsoft here and proud to participate, partner with the College of Europe, participate in this program, and offer a 5,000 euro monetary award in order to stimulate scholarship in the technology field to help inform policy making. We got many very good uh, worthy submissions this year. I want to thank all of you who participated. Um, th this was a tough choice, and there were topic, very um, there were several issues addressed in different theses. So it was it was a tough choice. But the winner, I'm I'm glad to say, did an excellent job in terms of depth of research, consideration of policy options, consideration of international case studies, and chose a very relevant topic: broadband regulation. And even though that's a very complicated and technical field and hard, a very hard choice, all of us who use digital devices depend on connectivity. And we cannot take it for granted. We need continued good policy in order to stimulate investment and to meet society's needs. The winner 
this year of this um, Best Thesis Award is a fine young Italian lawyer named Salvatore Vernuccio. The next uh, award is the award of the Transparency International EU Prize for the best thesis on the European Union's role in anti-corruption efforts, transparency, integrity and accountability of the EU's institutions. It will be presented by Mr. Hoffmann Axel. So, on to the Transparency Prize. Uh, I graduated here in 2014, so it's a great honor for me to, uh, to come back and uh, present the prize for Transparency International. For those who don't know us, Transparency International is a global movement against uh, corruption. We have uh, 100 uh, offices in 100 countries and in 26 of 28 member states. And we are not only fight against corruption, but also for good governance, for transparent democratic institutions, and so on. Now, of course, uh, the democratic deficit of the EU is an old hat, and, um, and I don't want to uh, get into uh, topics such as uh, this perceived deficit or, or things like that. Um, however, in the recent years, since the financial crisis amidst austerity and uh, uh, and uh, also as a uh, financial reforms, uh, it does seem that people have uh, developed this this, uh, this impression that the system as such is not delivering for the ordinary folks. So uh, this rising inequality, this uh, this general feeling, has delivered, of course, uh, a few blows. I'm not going to uh, mention them uh, again. But uh, it does beg the question what we can do in order to make the European Union uh, a democratic, sustainable society that we all want to have. Uh, so many of you will, of course, go on to work for the European institutions. And whether you end up working in the public sector or in the private sector, whether you work at the Commission or for a public relations consultancy, whether it's at the European Ombudsman or at the European or at a law firm, uh, just let me give to you this, this one piece of uh, advice that also civil society organizations, also non-governmental organizations, they might not be as, as big or as uh, flashy, but they also need the support of the best and the brightest of the European students in order to serve the public interest and fight together for a common cause. So this is why we award the CSIS Prize each year alongside the Transparency Group. And this year I'm pleased to announce it goes to uh, Jose Antonio Campos Navarro. The next uh, award is, in a sense, uh, close to my home country. <laughs> it's the IRD German Language Prize uh, presented by Mrs. Margaret Fender. Please. Thanks for. Ja, liebe Gäste, ladies and gentlemen, ich bin hier, um, I'm here to represent my um, chef, the head of the language department of the Goethe Institute in Brussels. And I'm in, in charge with a program Europa Netzwerk Deutsch, which um, provides, which enables us to provide um, scholarship programs here also at the College of Europe. And um, I'm very glad and I'm very honored to be here and to award this prize for the best um, work, for the best uh, performance during this academic year in a German language course to a young lady um, who will get a prize and which uh, 
um, brings her to a very famous town in this summer to attend a German intensive course. And this town, it's not our exciting uh, capital uh, of Berlin, of Germany of Berlin. It's not the elegant Hanseatic town in the north of Hamburg and neither Köln with the old cathedral and not uh, to Munich, to our Bavarian uh, capital, no. Um, it's another very famous, very beautiful town and um, a town where German is spoken in a very charming way. And the city um, which I'm uh, talking about is Vienna, Wien in Austria. And be, go, let's going ahead one year, next year, uh, from July on, Austria will have the European presidency. And then when the politics and the subjects and the medias, and you will see a European politics and everyone there is focused on Vienna, and you see the glory of this town, then you will remember um, of your stay this summer in Vienna. And um, this prize is going to a young lady, I already said it, Mariana Fernandez Kufe. Herzlichen Glückwunsch. <laughs> May, may uh, I sing just one more? Um, um, joy and fun having a foreign language is only if you use it. It's like playing piano. When you begin with the theory, it's very really difficult, but when you try to use the language, then you will get fun and joy. Thank Go you, ahead, Sam. with your name. Gehen Sie weiter. Herzlichen Glückwunsch. Bye bye. Thank you. We then move to the uh, Bayer Tour Award for the best thesis on EU-China relations for, presented by my colleague Professor Ben. Since 2008, um, every year we receive at the end of the academic year, uh, some uh, theses, and which are uh, with very good quality. Um, but these theses, of course, uh, were submitted by the students who applied on the condition they applied for the thesis award. Um, this year, the same as the previous years, we received several uh, very, very good quality theses, and um, they are above 16. But among them, the highest is from Po department, which is 18 out of 20. And the winner for this year is Mr. Ya Ning Zhang. Oh my congratulations. I forgot to mention that the award is 1,000 euro. The next prize to be awarded is a Burson Masteller Prize for the best thesis on the role of non-governmental actors in EU policy making, presented by Ms. Anne Todd. Uh, dear guests, and most importantly, dear students whom we are celebrating today, every year we are very happy to award the Burson Mars Teller Prize for the best thesis on the role of non governmental actors in EU policy making. We have received really good pieces of work this year as well, 
and it was really good to read a thesis which all proved that you here in College of Europe not only have a rich theoretical background, but also an in-depth knowledge about how decision-making in Brussels really works. Bursa Marteller is a leading public affairs, uh, public relations and communications agency, and we have offices in, country, in 110 countries around the world. And our Brussels office has a team of 50 public affairs consultants from 14 different countries. So we are just as international as you are. And as a public affairs consultancy, every day we are trying to find ways to gain valuable intelligence for our clients uh, about ongoing EU legislation. And also we are trying to find ways to provide their feedback into the decision-making system of the EU and into the EU bubble, right? So as our industry is changing, along with global shifts and new trends, we are facing challenges every day to become more responsive, uh, more creative, more digital, and also to maintain at the same time the quality of our work. When deciding about the best thesis, we kept these expectations in mind and uh, we were looking for a piece of work which is analytical and critical, but at the same time creates something new and smart. We were happy to see that many of uh, the applicants managed to achieve this. And it is good to know that you are the people who are going to work with us in Brussels one day, hopefully. Uh, the thesis we would like to uh, award today provided a very relevant insight into the role of the European Parliamentary Research Service in the EU bubble. So I would like to congratulate Andrea Silva for her excellent work. Thanks again. We will then move to the ENP award for the best thesis on the European neighborhood policy, presented by my colleague Professor Stöll. Well, dear students, dear guests, uh, many of you know what the European neighborhood policy is and have followed courses, have written theses. We got a lot of applications. It's a prize that is for the Bruges campus, but open to all the Bruges programs. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a policy that has been around for many years already. So sometimes I think it's difficult to find topics that have not been tackled yet when it comes to the ENP. But I think the prize goes to one thesis that managed to do so. And I will first read the title and then announce the winner. So the title of the thesis is Climate Change Has No Borders, a comparative analysis of EU-induced domestic policy change regarding climate action in the Eastern Partnership countries by Jana Stuhlmann from the Politics Department. Thanks, Eglin. We then move to the Google Prize for the best thesis on EU competition rules and policy regarding to information technology to be presented by Mrs. Julia Holz. Thank you very much. Dear students, dear guests, um, Google is honored to be again here for a couple of years now. Um, the, I think Google and the college have a lot in common. Uh, we look for international people that can connect to um, the digital world that has grown very close together. Um, if you do an interview with Google, a job interview, one of the attributes that you will be rated upon is Googliness. And I wouldn't be surprised if that comes quite close to uh, the spirit you have here at the college. It means you get along with people from other cultures, you can empathize, you, you are fun to work with. We have um, 
we, we have awarded, we will award uh, uh, the prize for the best thesis in uh, technology. And we have also received very, very good thesis. Um, it was a hard choice. We have uh, had several theses that were at the forefront of the policy debate. Um, and the best one uh, has to do with uh, data. As we, you may have heard, access to big data is um, a very interesting antitrust topic. And uh, the, the thesis uh, that dealt with this um, uh, stood out. So I'm very happy to um, award the prize, which will include an internship with Cleary Gottlieb. Um, we hear we may need some help over the summer, could, could be. Um, I'm very happy to award uh, the prize to, uh, to Tobias Pesch. Congratulations. Just a minute. Vielen Dank. Thanks. We continue to move from one subject to another, and now it's my pleasure to announce the, uh, to introduce the Johnson & Johnson Prize for the best thesis on healthcare consumer goods, presented by Mr. Gustavo Maranes. Hello, good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure to be in the college today. I was here 20 years ago. We had our 20th anniversary dinner last Saturday. Uh, it was quite an amazing moment, a lot of great memories. But um, today I'm here to represent Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson, as you know, is a healthcare company and we collaborate with the College of Europe. A couple of years ago we started um, a collaboration to to actually organize the European Health Parliament in Brussels for 50 people including College of Europe students to brainstorm and come up with proposals on the future of healthcare in Europe. Uh, we expect to have the third edition next year and to have some College of Europe students joining us and um, I'm going to, to, to propose today the the new, um, sorry, the, the prize for Johnson & Johnson to the best thesis on a consumer healthcare uh, topic. Uh, all departments and both campuses are eligible. I wanted to stress that for this prize. And uh, after a hard deliberation, we felt that there was a very interesting thesis on pharmaceuticals, looking into research, development and innovation in the pharmaceutical sector. So um, this year, the Johnson Johnson uh, thesis award goes to Tamara Nicolaescu. We now move to the ECDPM award for the best thesis on new directions for European Union relations with Africa, presented by our colleague Professor James Mackey. Thanks. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, dear students, uh, colleagues uh, here. It's a great pleasure to be back at this uh, closing ceremony, which is always uh, a delightful moment after spending. Uh, uh, weeks teaching, it's nice to see the results. So I'm um, very pleased to be here. So this year, um, 
ECDBM, which is a, a research institute in, uh, focusing on European relations with Africa, based in the Dutch uh, EU treaty city of Maastricht. Um, we have uh, looked at a number of very good CZs, and we've chosen one um, which uh, focuses on the, the nexus between uh, development policy, trade policy, and security, uh, which is quite an, uh, an interesting and topical area. Uh, it deals with conflict minerals um, and the regulation of mining, um, in, uh, uh, in particularly in, in Central Africa. So seven years ago, some of you may know that uh, the United States introduced the Dodd-Frank Act, which sought to regulate uh, US companies in their mining activities. And just this year, uh, the European Union, uh, in April, so only a couple of months back, have introduced its own regulation. And now with the, the uh, Trump administration seeking to revoke the Dodd-Frank Act, uh, all eyes are on the European Union. And this thesis goes into examining the experience of the Dodd-Frank Act, what worked, what didn't work, and seeking to bring out lessons for which could be used in the um, application, the implementation of the European, uh, this new European regulation. So it's with great pleasure that I would like to award this thesis, which consists of four months uh, internship uh, with ECDPM, uh, to Ms. Susan Achak. Next on uh, the list of awards is the European External Action Service Award for the best thesis on EU external relations presented by Mr. Mirko Poik. Thank you so much for joining us. Dear Rector, dear members of the faculty, um, dear distinguished guests, and most of all, dear students, um, I'm it's my honor and my pleasure to announce this year's winner of the EIS thesis of, on the best, uh, best thesis on the EU, EU external relations. As in previous years, the award consists in an internship at the EIS headquarters in Brussels. It is the fourth year that we grant this award. Uh, we're happy to say that out of the three previous trainees, two are still with the EIS. This year we have received 42 applications and the jury had a really uh, hard time to make the choice. Uh, we were impressed by the high quality of the research papers in general and by the relevance of many of them for the day-to-day -day work of the European External Action Service. This year's winning thesis is well argued and strikes a balance between theory and practice. It shows the author's deep understanding of the EAS and its role in foreign policy making. She analyzes the EU's concept on mediation, its application in concrete cases, and proposes original and forward-looking policy recommendations. And I'm happy to announce that this year's EAS award on the best thesis on EU international relations goes to a thesis entitled The EU Concept on Mediation, Statement of Guiding Principles or Outdated Policy Strategy, Learning Experience from Experience in Yemen and Myanmar by Monica Musho.
we move again to a rather different field, to the European Federation of Pharmaceutical Industries and Associations Prize for the best thesis on public policies impacting on the pharmaceutical sector, presented by Mrs. Marie Picard. Thanks very much for joining us. Merci. Merci. Bon après-midi à tout le monde. Channel One, please. Euh, J'ai choisi de vous présenter euh, ce prix en français. D'abord parce que je voulais vous faire quelques citations euh, que j'emprunte à Jorge Semprin et qui me paraissent très pertinents aujourd'hui. Aujourd'hui, les Européens ont un devoir d'audace. Le plus grand danger de l'Europe est la lassitude. C'est toujours la lassitude qui freine l'élan. C'est le propre de l'Europe de rester une construction inachevée, portée par une perpétuelle insatisfaction. Il faut une dose considérable de lucidité, d'optimisme, de l'intelligence pour affirmer la possibilité de l'efficacité. Vive l'Europe Cette année-ci, nous avons reçu euh, quatre thèses et je remercie tant les professeurs qui continuent de soutenir les étudiants à consacrer leurs thèses à des matières euh, dans un secteur qui n'est pas toujours choyé et aimé, mais qui est effectivement un secteur qui fait beaucoup pour l'humanité. Et je suis fière d'avoir servi et de continuer de servir ce secteur. Euh, les dans, parmi les quatre thèses, nous avons eu quelques difficultés à départager deux thèses. Et nous avons dès lors décidé d'octroyer un prix, mais aussi de donner une mention spéciale. Alors je vais commencer par la mention spéciale en déclarant qu'il n'y a eu aucune connivence avec un autre prix, mais notre mention spéciale va à Tamara Nicolaescu, que j'aimerais accueillir. Alors, le prix de l'EFPIA est basé sur quatre critères. Euh, la compréhension des thèmes abordés, euh, la façon dont le thème ou dont l'argumentation est construite, mais surtout et avant tout l'originalité, et aussi l'originalité dans euh, les propositions qui sont faites. Alors, dans la thèse de Tamara, nous avons surtout euh, voulu reconnaître l'originalité de nouvelles solutions dans une matière qui n'est pas euh, toujours très facile à traiter, puisqu'il s'agissait de profitabilité, financement interne et innovation, qui est un petit peu euh, parfois réparbateur pour les non-économistes. Mais étant économiste moi-même, euh, je n'avais pas de souci de la suivre. Euh, par contre, la thèse à laquelle nous avons décidé de donner le prix est une thèse qui couvrait un sujet qui nous semblait totalement nouveau, dans la manière dont il a été traité. Euh, la thèse concerne l'évaluation de fusion et des décisions qui sont faites dans des euh, fusions et était basée sur des études empiriques pratiques. Et notre lauréat est donc Luca Desplano. Voilà. Et je ferai Luca le livre de George Samprin pour qu'il puisse le lire en entièreté. Voilà. Merci.
move now to the award for the best thesis on the European Union's Common Fund Security Policy, the Common Security and Defence Policy and the EU External Relations, um, awarded by the European Union Institute for Security Studies. And I would like to ask uh, Antonio Missiroli to present the prize. Yeah, there you are. Good afternoon. This is also the fourth edition of the award and I find myself in a sort of awkward situation because maybe I am double-hatted because I'm both a professor here and the director of the award-giving institution. Uh, I don't know whether this creates a conflict of interest, it's not up to me to decide, uh, but uh, one of the, the, the winners this year will also be one of my students in the course, a uh, person I followed from very close up. Uh, the field of applicants was very rich and very strong, so it was a very, very difficult decision to take. But in the end, uh, our decision was driven not only by the quality very high of the thesis, but also by its relevance for the work program of the Institute. That is, the winner will have the opportunity to bring to bear uh, expertise in the daily work of the Institute in the months to come, because of course the award translates into a, a, a very nice uh, job opportunity for a few months. So, for the award, US. I, UISS award for this year, the winner is Justine Kubera. We now change again the subject, we move to the Europol Award for the best thesis on EU internal security, a domain of particular challenges as was already been pointed out, um, will be introduced by Mr. Alfred Nunzi from Europol. Good afternoon, I'm honored to uh, present the award for the best thesis on EU internal security studies. As mentioned by uh, President Konings earlier, terrorism is one of the main topics of interest to uh, European Union citizens and politicians, as well as to the specialized agencies. And we have uh, reviewed several proposals from the college and we have identified, like Eurojust, terrorism to be a topic of interest for students in the college. We uh, focused on a particular thesis. The topic chosen was foreign fighters threat. I'm honored to present the award to Mrs. Zoe Freund. The next award is the Exxon Mobil Award for the best thesis on the future of energy in Europe, presented by Mr. Nicolas Beckelmans. Thank you. Um, my company, Exxon Mobil, has been supported the, supporting this uh, prestigious uh, institution for at least more than a decade, I believe, and I'm honored that in addition to that, for the second time, I'm able to present the ExxonMobil Award for the best thesis on the future uh, of energy in Europe. Uh, we have been supporting this award because we think it is important to have a real academic debate on the current and future challenges, uh, energy and climate challenges Europe is facing. Now, being in this room, 
I'm struck by the amount of energy, uh, amount of positive energy there is in this room. So I have the impression that you all are able to tackle any challenge Europe is facing. So congratulations for that. Um, we received, as last year, a number of uh, excellent uh, theses. And by the way, the prize uh, is a, uh, a paid internship uh, at our headquarters in uh, Brussels. Uh, and we received a number of excellent theses, of course. But we have chosen the recipient of this year's uh, award based on the author's uh, rigorous analysis as well as the insights the author has provided on the role uh, of solidarity uh, in the European gas policy. So I'm honored to uh, grant this year's award to Ms. Anna Martin. The next prize uh, to be awarded is the Jacques Delors Prize for the best thesis on a subject relating to the European project, presented by Ms. Claire David. Thanks so much for joining us. Merci. Bonjour à tous. Euh, tout d'abord, je voudrais excuser Yves Bertoncini, que certains d'entre vous connaissent peut-être en tant que professeur, qui devait être là et qui malheureusement n'a pas pu. Euh, je, je suis très honorée d'être parmi vous à cette occasion qui vient marquer la fin de vos études. Je suis là pour représenter l'Institut Jacques Delors, qui est le think tank que Jacques Delors a fondé après qu'il ait quitté la Commission européenne en 1995. Le but de nos travaux s'inscrit dans la continuité des idées qui sont chères à Jacques Delors, c'est-à-dire fédérer les États-nations autour d'une Europe forte, d'une Europe unie et d'une Europe solidaire. C'est toujours dans cette optique euh, qu'il y a maintenant trois ans, Jacques Delors nous a contactés. Il nous a dit qu'il voulait que tous les documents qu'il avait gardés pendant toutes les années durant lesquelles il a été président de la Commission servent. Servent pour comprendre l'histoire, servent pour éclairer le présent et pourquoi pas pour construire l'avenir. Nous avons donc travaillé pendant plus d'un an à organiser le fond, à décrire les dossiers qui le composent et à le numériser pour qu'aujourd'hui, euh, des copies numériques des archives originelles soient mises à la disposition des étudiants et des chercheurs. Grâce à l'aide précieuse du Collège d'Europe, ces documents qui reflètent une période importante de l'histoire de la construction européenne vous sont accessibles. Nous avons donc décidé, dans cette idée, de créer le prix Jacques Delors du meilleur mémoire. C'est un prix qui se compose en réalité de trois récompenses. Une somme de 1000 euros, un stage pour venir travailler avec nous et aussi la possibilité de transformer votre mémoire de fin d'études en une publication qui sera publiée par l'Institut. Cette année, nous avons reçu de nombreux travaux de très grande qualité. Le choix était dur, mais finalement, le jury est tombé d'accord sur un travail qu'on a trouvé fouillé, un travail sérieux, avec de nombreuses interviews à l'appui, et qui a le mérite, en cette année du 30e anniversaire du programme Erasmus, de rappeler que Jacques Delors en est le père. Je suis ravie de décerner le prix Jacques Delors à Francesca Dalboni.
Mesdames et Messieurs, permettez-moi d'ajouter que le Collège d'Europe a naturellement un autre lien avec Jacques Delors et c'est le fait qu'il a été pour plusieurs années le président du conseil d'administration du Collège. Et son nom sera toujours associé avec le développement du Collège. Uh, we will move to now to the Linklater's Prize for the best thesis on the economic analysis of European law, presented by uh, Thomas Fancho. Please. Congratulations. You have not only accomplished your studies this year, but you also survived a heat wave. And at least I'm suffering from it a little bit. I am also myself an alumnus and I'm therefore glad to be here on behalf of my law firm Linklaters and we offer an internship of three months or maybe more in our Brussels office in our competition team there. The thesis that wins this prize deals with multi-sided markets, gives a very intelligent insight in the matter and being sufficiently intelligent myself I will not try to summarize it here, but having read the thesis, I am sure that the winner will be a great contribution to our team. So the winner of our prize, of the Linklater's Prize, is Miss Sarah Bouchon. The next prize is the Maya Brown Prize for the best thesis on the impact of EU law on business, presented by Mr. Angela Alvarez Alberdi. Welcome and thank you. Thank you. Um, well, um, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, I graduated from the college uh, nine years ago, and uh, the closing ceremony is by far uh, one of the most uh, beautiful moments in my professional life. Um, the, the, the joy I, I feel uh, in the uh, closing ceremonies is something uh, which I cannot find elsewhere in my professional or, or personal life. I, I like to quote uh, Commission President Jacques Delors, always actually, uh, Europe is a state of mind. And uh, to me, uh, the, the, the joy of uh, all of these um, committed students uh, represents this uh, state of mind, uh, which is Europe. Uh, and now, uh, uh, when you uh, finish your degree, you start your professional life, um, you are uh, multipliers of, of this joy. Indeed, you are uh, multipliers of, of Europe. Um, I, I would like to echo the, the words of the uh, president of the Alumni Association, uh, Eleonora. Um, in this uh, belief in the project of European integration, um, you may find uh, meaning in your professional life, um, but uh, this meaning is not always there in your position. Um, my message is professional life is tough, uh, especially at the beginning, uh, especially in Brussels or in national capitals. I mean, when you start with an internship, it's not always easy, it's not always pleasant. Uh, my message today is that uh, you should resist uh, and you should just um, go forward. Um, you should also treat yourself. And in this point, I would like to remind you that this summer is uh, your last real long holiday. So please, enjoy it. Um, and at my law firm, Mayer Brown, um, we are more than happy to finance or co-finance a very nice holiday uh, for a good student. Um, uh, we are going to give our award on the impact of EU law on business to a particularly uh, good master thesis, uh, very well researched, uh, very well written, full of uh, interesting insights, extremely topical, it is about patents, and uh, for a uh, US law firm like ours, it does have a uh, transatlantic uh, EU-US relations uh, component. And, the winner is Mr. Sean O'Mahony.
We now move to the Tusiad Award for the best thesis on EU enlargement policies presented by Dilek Aydin. Please, the floor is yours. Thanks for joining. Dear students, dear guests, dear directors of the studies, dear rector. First of all, on behalf of Turkish Industry and Business Association, I would like to congratulate all students of College of Europe today. It's a great honor again to be here, part of this joyous event. We are going through fourth industrial revolution, smart factories, artificial intelligence, robotics. This radical tr societal transformation triggered by digitalization and hybridization of the digital, physical, and biological systems is not only about the disruptive technologies. We as TUSIAT believe this is also about the, a new way of thinking and a new way of life. This also means better nutrition. So, accordingly, organic agriculture is increasingly important for Turkey, an EU candidate country. Even though the industrial uh, goods accounts for 95% of our exports. I guess this small hint with this uh, organic agriculture touch is enough for the student who received the Tusiad Award to know which thesis won the Tusiad Award on enlargement policies. So, without further ado, I would like to announce the winner. It's Gabriel Badin. We will make sure that uh, the winner gets the prize, so for some reason not present. Thanks you anyway for having joined us and uh, for continuing with the prize. Well, can I... <laughs> so, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, um, we will continue now with a series of prizes. Um, which are certainly not less Im important, but whose presentation uh, will not be as exciting as it has been so far, because it's uh, unfortunately me as rector has to present the prizes, and I'm obviously much less of a specialist in the subjects, and normally will not have read the master thesis, because each year it happens that for various reasons some of the organizations providing the prizes cannot send a delegate. So, um, I can assure you that I will be as surprised as you are if I now open the envelopes which I have been provided with, in many cases at the last minute, to announce the um, winners of the prizes. Yeah, good. Well, I just got instructions that... <laughs> The only uh, thing which I can actually announce, because the details have then to be uh, f uh, clarified in relations with the academic office and the prize giver, is actually the subject and the lucky uh, and meritorious winner. So the first prize is the Adno Prize for the best thesis in the field of digital and telecoms policy or regulation. And the winner is Alexander Mekela. Yeah. I'm not allowed to open the envelope, it's for you. <laughs> Thanks very much. The next prize I have the pleasure and the honor to announce is the Union for the Mediterranean Award for the best thesis on Euro-Mediterranean relations. And the winner is um, Alena Hus. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about it. So I am. Uh, is the envelope to you? Many congratulations. Thank you. 
Next award is the EEC, EECSC Award for the best thesis on the role of the actors of the civil society in the European decision-making process. Truly an important field, especially in the current context of the European Union. Um, and the winner is Rémi Colombé Gourdon. Unfortunately, I cannot tell you more. In any case, you have won the prize. Thank you. <laughs> then I have um, the honor to announce another prize, which has been created in memory of a student of the college, an alumnus of the college, who unfortunately died very young. It's a Rafael Sanz Rodriguez Memorial Prize for the best thesis in the law department. And the winner is Alfredo Saracino. Thank you. Congratulations again. For a number of years already, the presidency of the Council of Ministers of the Italian Republic awards uh, prizes for the best Italian students. It's the Department for European Policy of the Presidenza del Consiglio. And I will now call up the five lucky Italian winners, not only lucky, but meritorious, of course, because they are the best students of the Italian group. Fulvia Ristuccia. Niccolò Bompieri Costanza Pier Donati Guido Paolini And Simone Benazzo. It's not there? Ah, okay. So, we'll be informed later. So, um, I have the envelopes. I hand them over. Um, it's Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations again. So, we take one photo. Where? We send yeah. it to the Presidenza del Consiglio. <laughs> And you can have it, as well, of course. <laughs> All the best. Congratulations again. Now. It can happen that the decision making process sometimes a very difficult decision-making process in the European Union, but there can also be a difficult decision-making process on price awards, so that uh, the decision is not yet known, because the jury is still, so to say, deliberating. So the prize of the Global Competition Law Center for the best thesis on competition law and policy will only be announced in October. Slight anticlimax at the end of this award ceremony, but the prize will surely be awarded. So, uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, support, your patience also, because it's a long list of prizes. Uh, it's now my pleasure to actually uh, hand over the floor to uh, the student representatives, Mrs. Verle Brink and Mrs. Irina Lagodna. Please come forward.
Dear friends, colleagues, guests, here we are, our closing ceremony at the College of Europe. It is a genuine symbol of the end of this exciting, intense, and for many of us, truly life-changing experience at this very special European academic institution. This year that we've spent together in the amazing city of Bruges is leaving us with dozens of lifelong memories and even more Instagram photos. It was also a year full of contrasts with its ups and downs, successes and failures, brighter and darker moments, both in our daily lives, around Europe, and also on the global political scale. It is hard to believe that it has been almost 10 months since we arrived to Bruges. Do you all remember your first day at the college? The exciting first weeks, introductory courses, Verdrit, first parties in the student bar. By the way, I think we should all thank the bar committee for having done a great job for creating the most exciting memories at the college. But before all the parents sitting in the audience get worried, we also had our punctual night watchmen who were there in time to take care of our safety and ensure a long enough sleep. And we are also very thankful to them for having done a great job. And imagine how gloomy the next mornings would be, if not the delicious breakfasts served to us by our kind residence ladies who took care of us for these 10 months. Let us also remember the incredible opportunities we've had this year. Recall our opening ceremony, when we were so lucky to have President Juncker congratulating us with the beginning of our academic year and inspiring us to become future European leaders. The same ceremony that will forever keep in our hearts the biography of John Maynard Keynes. <laughs> A very special thank you to Rector Moner for this. Special thank you to Rector Moner for this, as well as for constantly striving to make a college a better place and for his many successful missions abroad. <laughs> we were equally lucky to follow amazing study programs and we would like to thank all the department directors, professors and academic assistants. Recall all the classes, sleepless nights, non-existent weekends, exams, endless tourists on the streets, and also the Vienna Ball, French cafe in the canteen, Turkish pastry, and all the amazing, incredible national weeks that would not happen without help of our irreplaceable and managing it all student affairs office with Julie and Olivia, to whom we are so thankful for having done so much for us during this year. <laughs> of course, we want to thank the library staff, ICT service, facilities service, language service, career office, administrative staff and custodians. And how musical this year was. Of course, with the help of the Bloody Maynards, our amazing college band, big applause for you guys. Also the choir, the bells of Bruges, and what about the unforge unforgettable repair works at 7 in the morning in Garenmarkt and their music which woke me up so early every morning 
<laughs> during several months. And what about our incomparable study life at the college? Each department had their own little life with their own departmental families. First of all, the eco department. From European economy know-it-alls to the Bruges party animals, the students of eco department that I'm thrilled to represent have tried and proven themselves successful in all the spheres of college life. The luckiest department whose thesis deadline was extended for entire three days. We have proven that impossible is nothing. We've come a long way from September to become who we are now in June, ready to choose our roles in the European and overseas job markets. As European private sector professionals, we will be able to build the most promising business strategies. Working in a central bank, we will be able to build, we will be able to be wise and creative enough to select the right monetary policies and monetary policy instruments. As researchers, we will be able to conduct and build state-of-the-art econometric models and finally establish the causality between the number of beers consumed in the bar and the successful exam marks. Positive relationship, no doubt. And of course, we will break down to the very graphs the economic benefits of the European integration and the negative consequences of Brexit. As for the IRD, what, if anything, have you learned this year? <laughs> well, clear communication is vital to good diplomacy. And judging by this yearbook's nominees, for the loudest people. It's fair to say that those aspiring diplomats found their voice this year. Sadly, even though they spent all the first semester together decentering outside-in perspectives on the grids in three-level games, the biggest question of the year puzzled them, and it was whether the hot dogs are sandwiches. <laughs> Finally, IRD students were blessed with an extremely supportive department, which sometimes had to remind them politely that for some of them, being on their best behavior may not be in themselves. And now law department. If a year in law department were to be codified, it would consist of four articles. Article 1. A law student must be physically strong in order to ensure that he or she can carry the exaggerated syllabi in suitcases for the exams, without any help from a third party. Article 2. A law student must possess photographic memory in order to properly reproduce applicable law, both orally and written. Article 3, paragraph 1. A law student must be capable of partying, dancing, and drinking all night long. Article 3, paragraph 2. A law student must be capable of attending and contributing actively to highly complex classes after having followed the procedure in paragraph 1. And lastly, Article 4. A law student must love law so much that he or she is ready to commence at least 60 hour working weeks in a strictly legal field upon graduation. Thank you lawyers for having acted in compliance with this code of conduct. Despite your endless complaints about how hard the law program is, you guys were amazing. And now the poll department, which I have proudly represented and also the biggest department this year. Eh? <laughs> we are the ones who have learned institutional law in French in just four months, who have been able to explain political theories and economic trilemmas alike. We are the ones who wrote the longest thesis 
and can tell you everything about your rights as an air passenger. <laughs> All the while, of course, making the most out of this beautiful city. Part of our life has consisted of last minute tweeting, power reading for our discussion groups, and looking as alive as possible on a Friday morning for a Costa lecture. <laughs> I might be a bit biased, but we can easily call this the best department out of them all. <laughs> Together, these four departments form the college. For 70 years, this institution has been a place to form the European fonctionnaire of tomorrow. Since 1949, its mission has been to further European integration and cooperation by teaching the European story to students from this continent and beyond. When the college was founded, the world was different. The Second World War had just ended, Germany was at its weakest, and at the time, the Brits still wanted to be part of this project. The goal of mutual partnership in Europe still seems relevant today. But one can help but wonder whether the tools and methods that were part of the college at that time are still the right ones today. Have we as students been adequately prepared to promote the European project in a Europe that we live in now? A Europe in which there is widespread Euroscepticism and a world in which strange blonde haircuts seem to get you far here in Europe and also across the Atlantic. Did the college prepare us for that? Yes, we know what an implementing act is. Law students can recite Article 102 TFEU. And amongst the IRDs, everyone can hopefully explain the EMP in French. And this does prepare us to work in the institutions. But does it prepare us for the world that exists outside the Berlimont? One that doesn't know how the EU works. Look to your left, look to your right. We came here as Dutch, Spanish, Polish students. But we will leave as something more. We will leave Bruges as Europeans. We have experienced what European unity is like in our classes, in our residences, even in the bar singing Sweet Caroline together. We understand what the European project is about, and it's our strength. We came here to become EU insiders, and the college has delivered. We've been given a map to the European institutions. Yet maybe we should at times step out of the bubble that is the college in Brussels, into the outside world, where everyday citizens, as our friends and families, don't know the meaning of words such as trilogues and co repair and don't get excited over the Commission's annual work program. Because these bubbles, they might have been what brought Brexit and allowed Trump to triumph. And with a lack of genuine understanding of the EU and a lack of leadership in promoting its cause, the loudest voices tend to prevail. And that is why the initiative of some students and the Student Affairs Office, the EU together with its citizens, was such a good project, where students talked to locals in Bruges and explained the EU. And we need more of this. Since we understand what the European project is about, there might be a role for us. And instead of preaching to the converted, we should praise the European project actively to those who doubt it. However, at times an explanation of the ordinary legislative procedure might, strangely enough, not change much. It's about engaging with people and highlighting the EU's relevance to their lives. So basically, enjoy the bubble, but create a plus looks in your hometown as well. And in this way, Keynes is indeed the promotion of the year when Brexit and Trump took over. But most importantly, it was also the year in which Europe started to fight back. 
the year in which Macron and Merkel start pushing forward a new approach. The year in which climate change became prominent on the agenda. The year citizens are brought to the foreground. After a time of several crises, there is hope and optimism again. And we can and should be part of that turning point. The college has given us the knowledge, and now it's up to us to make it work in the Europe of today, so that that old dream of integration and cooperation can live on, and the Brits will regret ever having left. <laughs> Our year here at the college, it's almost over. Can you all remember to start when Rector Moner asked, uh, told us about the 49 nationalities represented here? and ask us all to stand up. Well, we won't do that again, don't worry. But this demonstrated our differences. And with that came, of course, our prejudices. And some were true. Rector Monard did not tell us that some Italians would be this loud. <laughs> but of course, there's some nuance. Some stereotypes might be true, others not. And it's for you to decide. Do all Brits drink heavily? Are all Spanish always late and Germans on time? Are Scandinavians cold and the Swiss never have a say in anything? <laughs> I hope that at least I have proven that not all Dutch people smoke weed. <laughs> We have seen how we can be different and learned to appreciate it. But despite these differences, we have grown to become one promotion. And a sense of belonging to the college family will follow us everywhere. Through the rest of our lives, which will hopefully not be this intense, let's stick together as a promotion. Let's be there for each other in the highs and lows that follow and help each other out. For all of us, this year was a roller coaster filled with crazy ups and downs, one you'll never forget, but also never want to repeat. The friendships, intense studying and horrible deadlines, the drunken bar nights and the couples that emerged, and even the canteen food, it was all unforgettable. <laughs> Each in its own way. So, let's all agree, this is not the end. It's not the end of our friendships, our college family, and our European path. It is just the end of a year that marks a new beginning. Thank you. Well, it's, um, it's a long-standing tradition that the student representatives on this occasion also include quite a number of, how shall I say, lighter and funny elements in uh, their speeches. And I think you have lived up fully to this element. But I have to say that uh, your speech has been uh, one of also the most substantial in terms of really reflective elements and broader issues to actually take away from the college to think about for your future and also for about the future of Europe. So thank you very much for this as well. I would like to say that um, the student representatives at the college play a very important role 
in terms of alerting us at the level of the management of issues um, which um, preoccupy the students, they play a vital role in making suggestions for changes, for improvements. I have to say, for reasons of resources, we cannot always fulfill all the requests, but each year the, there are changes introduced because of the role of the representatives, and I must say that the representatives this year have been particularly constructive. I would also like to say that you have really contributed to governance reforms at the college in the sense that precisely because you play this very positive role, because you have shown again um, how much you contribute to improvements at the college, that uh, the academic council and ultimately the administrative council of the college have followed my proposal to extend the number of representatives in the academic council from next year onwards. So from next year onwards there will be one representative per program in the academic council which will mean that your role in the key governing body of the college will increase even further. So this will always be connected with your year and the, uh, your proposal also to do so. Thanks very much. So, I will. so it's now, uh, uh, yes, I was alerted to the fact that there are some hidden presents for the rep uh, representatives, so if I could uh, ask all representatives to come forward, as the presents were hidden, I uh, <laughs> did not immediately connect, so please come forward. <laughs> In a college bag, of course. Congratulations. Also for the speech again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It fits nearly the color of your. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. All the contributions. Thank you. So before I leave um, the floor to a musical interlude by our excellent choir, that's just one of the other many activities <laughs> the students of the Keynes Promotion have actually engaged in and you have already seen to, to, uh, with what results. And to a special final musical interlude, I think we have uh, not yet had student at the College of a Promotion who actually will uh, accompany the Ode to Joy on the organ. So basically I ask you for two minutes of patience in, because he has first to get up to higher spheres in this church. So <laughs> I will ask you for a bit of, uh, of patience then. But it's now my, uh, my uh, duty and my final duty for today to formally declare the academic year 2016-2017 of the Keynes Promotion closed.
enjoy our European anthem.